Today we're going to be talking about native macro lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system. And to keep with the Four Thirds spirit, we're going to be reviewing four lenses using three cameras. See what I did there with the four and the three? Let's get undone. What is happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and I take a lot of pictures of camera gear. And sometimes I like to get in real close and show off very specific details of that gear. And for this, I typically need a macro lens. But I don't actually have any macro lenses for my Micro Four Thirds cameras. So today I figured it'd be a great idea to come up with what I think is the best buy of the four native MFT macro lenses. Now I told you that thing about photographing gear so that you would know that I'm not much of a bug shooter, but I will still do my best to try and make this review relevant for anybody looking to get a macro lens or just wondering what else is out there in the macro space regardless of what subjects you shoot. So to do this, I'm gonna break it down into a rubric with each category having a maximum of four points and a minimum of one. So let's go ahead and meet our contenders and then talk about the categories that we'll be reviewing. So the four lenses that we have are the Panasonic 30 millimeter F2.8, the Panasonic Leica 45mm f2.8, the Olympus 60mm f2.8, and the Olympus 30mm f3.5. Now there might be other lenses out there that say something about macro, but remember, in order to be a true macro lens, you have to be capable of a one-to-one -one reproduction, which means that something in real life that's five millimeters has to appear as five millimeters on the sensor. And just before we jump into the categories, now would be a perfect time to thank Camera Canada for hooking us up with these lenses to test. They are a terrific company with excellent customer service, so if you're looking to get some new camera gear, I highly recommend you check out their links in the description below. All right, so here's how we're gonna score these lenses. We're gonna split it up into five categories, and then do a sixth score afterwards for value. And the five categories are gonna include image quality, focusing speed for single AF, continuous AF for video, distance and ease of use for obtaining that one-to-one -one reproduction, build and features, and then the sixth one is gonna be for value. Now when it comes time for the on-camera test, we're gonna be using the Panasonic G9 for the image quality and the focus tests. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the features and the build quality of these lenses. All right, so let's tear into some unboxings here and I'll tell you some of the facts about the lenses that I think add to their build quality and features. So right now we're doing the Panasonic 30 millimeter F2.8. Uh, right out of the box, it's got a nice weight. It's metal on the outside, a nicely dampened focusing ring. And uh, overall, it's kind of like what you'd expect if you already have any uh, Panasonic Lumix lenses. I think they look cool, black, little red accents, and they feel, they feel substantial. And it comes with a black Lumix bag. Now, the 30 millimeter f2.8 is also capable of dual IS2 when paired with a camera that supports it, like the GH5 or the G9, which is pretty great because that's Panasonic's best image stabilization pairing available right now. But there aren't any selector switches or on off or anything like that for the stabilization. You'd have to do it in the body. But otherwise, the lens is just sort of always stabilization engaged, which of course means does have a bit of a rattle to it. Other than that, it's a pretty simple design, not much to talk about, except for the fact that this lens is not weather sealed, and in fact, none of the lenses except for one are, and we're gonna get into that one next. All right, so next up, as I was saying, is the only weather sealed lens, and it's the Olympus 60 millimeter f2.8. And this one's a pretty bare bones, you know, unboxing, you just have your manuals, but the lens just comes in bubble wrap, and you don't get a case or anything like that. In fact, you don't even get a lens hood, uh, but apparently there's a pretty cool little lens hood that you can get for this if you, order it afterwards. Now when it comes to build quality of this lens, it is a little bit different. I don't wanna say cheaper than the Panasonic, but there are a few more plastic components and it does feel a little bit like daintier, it's a little bit thinner. Uh, there is a focus limiter on it, which is also plastic, but that's nice that that's included. And there's also a gauge here to show what reproduction ratio you're on, you know, one to one, one to two, that kind of thing. The focus ring is nice, and as I was saying, it is weather sealed. Okay, next up we have the Panasonic Leica 45 millimeter f2.8. And this is the most expensive lens of the bunch, so you're expecting to get a little bit more you know, accoutrement with it. So we do have a lens hood, we have a carrying bag, very similar to the other one, it's another black Lumix one. And then we have the lens itself. For this one, the you have a few selector options. You have, it has Mega OIS, which when paired with a Panasonic Dual IS body, you will be able to get Dual IS 1, but you might need to have a firmware update. Uh, but the other lens is Dual IS 2, so it should have a little bit better stabilization on the 30 millimeter. There is a focus limiter and a switch to enable the image stabilization and turn it off. The focusing ring is really, really, really nice. It has a sort of grippy rubber kind of feel on the outside, but sort of the same dampening. And just overall has a nice feel, look, and build quality. It seems like a premium lens. 
Usually you get that when you get the Leica variants from Panasonic. As I was saying though, it is not weather sealed. Lastly, we have the 30 millimeter F3.5 from Olympus, which also is pretty bare bones when it comes to the unboxing situation. Ugh. No frills, just a lens in a box. And it looks pretty similar to the 60 millimeter, obviously a little bit shorter, and it's lacking the reproduction ratio guide and the focus limiter switch. It's similar to the 30 millimeter from Panasonic where there's basically nothing on it but a focusing ring. I do think that it's a little bit smaller and it feels a little bit lighter. And similar to what I said about the 60 millimeter, it kind of feels more plasticky and a little bit sort of daintier or something. Uh, but yeah, it's just a basic lens. Again, no weather sealing. All right, so to score them for build and features, the Panasonic Leica 45 will be the one that gets the top score at four points just because of overall build and features. I feel like this one's the best quality. Then for second place, it's a bit of a toss up between the Panasonic 30 and the Olympus 60, but I guess I have to give it to the Olympus for the weather sealing, the inclusion of the guide and the focus limiter. Even if I feel like the build seems a little bit maybe cheaper, I think the extra features in the weather sealing seal the deal. So that one gets three points. And then the 30 millimeter from Panasonic will come in close behind with two points. And then the Olympus 30 millimeter gets the one point. Now I'm not saying that this is bad build quality, just if you have to rank them, this one would come in last. All right, now let's do some handling and some autofocus tests. And for this, we're gonna be setting all the lenses to their widest aperture. Okay, so first up, I've got the Panasonic Leica 45 millimeter on here, and I'm just gonna be doing some back and forth point to point with a closer focusing and a little bit further away. So let's start down here. So it's hunting and the selector is set to full so it shouldn't be having issues with the distance. There is a little bit of in and out hunting. I mean that comes sometimes with contrast detection but yeah see there how it's not being able to get a lock? Now let's bring it a little bit closer and see. Yeah see that's no good. Even on the micro adjustments when we just come in a little bit. I know I'm doing black on black but I'm doing that on purpose. It hunts all the way in and out rather than just jumping forward. And I think we can test it on some a little bit more contrast like this Olympus symbol here. So it has better results on that but I'm still not a big fan of how how it struggles focusing on the audio interface there. All right, but let's switch over to something else and see if we get similar results. Okay, so here we've got the 30 millimeter f2.8 from Panasonic and we're going to do the same test only I'll keep the uh, Olympus cap in play as well. So we'll start off with the Lumix cap. Go to the go to the Olympus cap. Up here to the audio interface. Back down the Olympus cap. Back down the Lumix cap. We'll go a little bit closer. Over here. And then back up here. I would say this one focuses a lot better and a lot more reliably than the Leica one did. Uh, and we'll do a little bit of inching ever closer, and I'll even do it on the black on black because the Leica had trouble with that. So it does a little bit of that in and out sometimes, but when it does it, it seems to move in and out faster and more reliably where it doesn't end on still being out of focus, it, it jumps to focus. All right, so now we've got the 30 millimeter from Olympus, the F3.5, so the exposure will be a little bit darker, but we'll do the same tests. So let's start with that. Jump over here to the Olympus, up here to the audio interface. Oh, this one's actually pretty snappy. Look at this guy go. Oh, it's struggling there. Even with the AF assist beam, it was struggling. But when it does get it, it gets it pretty fast, I gotta say. Obviously, I prefer reliability. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's do a little bit of like an inch by inch thing here. It's a pretty good little performer. A little bit less reliable than the Panasonic, but it might actually be a hair faster than the Panasonic, but I would say they're close. Both, I think, performed better than the Leica. This one did share a little bit of the Leica's problems with the contrast over on the interface. I am putting it through a tough test here though, just so you know, I'm using low contrast, low light environments, but I figure whichever one performs the best in this probably will perform the best in any other conditions as well. Okay, so last up we've got the 60 millimeter F2.8 from Olympus, same test. There's the Olympus cap, and there's the interface. A little bit in and out on the Olympus cap, and in and out, oh, it's struggling here. 
I actually didn't get focus lock over here. Let me go back to that one. There's a little bit more hunting going on. It hunts quickly, but it hunts frequently. All right, let's try a little bit of uh, creeping in here. Oh, oh, it's struggling. There, it had to slow the focus right down in order to get it. Let's just try inching in and see what happens. All right, seems okay. It's a tough call between this one and the Leica. I want to say maybe this one's faster, so when it does hunt, it is less annoying. And when it finished hunting, for the most part, it seemed to get focus, at least over here. It did have a couple issues on the closer lens caps, though. Now, I was using it on the full setting. If we stop it down to just the further distance, let's see what that looks like. Now, it's not going to be able to focus down here, but I can knock it out of focus and then come back. So. The focus limiter will improve your performance as you would expect. Let's make it for macro only and bring it in here. So we're getting better results. Eh. So there's still a little bit of hunting. There is an improvement when you use the focus limiter, but it doesn't perfect the problem. So I mean, it's worth testing because they added it and I think it's if you can select that, you're gonna get better results. I personally prefer to have a lens that operates well in full. That way I don't always have to like try to tweak it. But if you were solely using this for macro, macro only, then obviously you could put it at one to one, which is a setting or just on the macro range. And I think that you would have better results than leaving it on full. All right, so now to score them, I'll do it in reverse order. The worst one with the one point, I think would have to go to the Leica, which is unfortunate because I expected it to probably be the best given that it's the premium one with the most expensive price. And then the second worst for two points would probably be the Olympus 60 millimeter. I found that it hunted kind of, you know, ferociously there. Then second place for three points, I'd have to give it to the 30 millimeter F3.5 from Olympus. It hunted more and was a little bit less reliable than the Panasonic, but when it did it, it was quite snappy. It was impressively quick for the price point of this lens. And then so obviously first place and with four points, I would give it to the Panasonic 30 millimeter F2.8. Now since we're already set up for close focusing, this is a perfect time to test the ease of use of the one-to-one -one reproduction. And we'll talk a little bit about the image stabilization and how that plays a factor. Now we're gonna start off obviously with the 60 mil because it's already on. And this one's probably gonna win because it has a selector switch that goes right to one-to-one. -to -one. You can just drop it in there and then you can see the needle on the guide slide up to one-to-one. -one. You know that you're at your one-to-one -one reproduction. And then you basically just have to point it at your subject and inch it in closer and closer until it gets in focus. Now, what will come into play here is how the lenses are weighted and how they feel trying to achieve that result. And there's some shake, but I can hold it pretty reasonably well at that sort of razor thin focus because we're using f2.8. Now, obviously this would be much easier if you just threw it on a tripod and did some focus stacking at 2.8. But I just wanna see sort of like how easy it is to handle it. So very fast to get to one to one reasonably easy to handle. I would say that the length of this one against its weight isn't really doing it any, any favors and it doesn't have image stabilization, but it is very fast to get to one to one. All right, so now we have on the other Olympus, this is the 30 millimeter F3.5. Now something you need to know about this lens is that it doesn't actually reproduce one to one at its closest focusing distance. It produces greater than one to one, 1 1.25 to one, which means, so it's still a macro because it can do at least one to one, but what'll happen then is some, if something is one millimeter in real life, it'll be 1.25 millimeters on the sensor, so it's actually a greater enlargement. It's a 1.25 times magnification. Let me switch over to manual here. When you do focus, all you really get is that silly mountain and the flower thing. So we can obviously bring it all the way over to flower and that's gonna tell us our closest thing, but that's gonna be 1.25. We don't actually know where one to one is, like if it's somewhere you know, here or here, we're not gonna be able to tell. But for the sake of the test, let's say that we wanted 1.25 to one, so let's just see how easy it is to get to that setting. So we will drop it all the way in and we'll do the same thing. We just get closer and closer and closer. Okay, so something that you can't see from the angle that I'm filming right now is how close you have to get to the subject in order to achieve that with these different lenses. Uh, the 60 millimeter was better because it has a longer focal length, but this one at 30 millimeters, you have to get very, very close, and it's hindered further by the fact that it does a 1.25 to 1, which means you'll be even closer. If it was a true one-to-one, -one, you'd be able to be a little bit further away, but I'll show you that distance when we do the Panasonic because that one's a one-to-one. -one. So that will give you an idea, I guess, of how far away this one would be to achieve a one-to-one. -one. But to give you an idea, I will hold the camera sideways like this and I will 
show you how close the lens cap has to be to be in focus. So there, I saw focus peaking. So somewhere like this, to show you like just, I don't know if it's in focus anymore, but somewhere like this distance here, that's crazy close. You're gonna be blocking so much light. If the light was coming from above or on an angle and you were like hovering over the subject trying to shoot, you're gonna be, you know, several stops down with the amount of light that you're gonna block with that. This actually brings up a good window to talk about the differences between micro four thirds and full frame when it comes to reproduction ratio. Because micro four thirds is twice as narrow with its field of view compared to full frame, you actually only have to achieve a one to two reproduction ratio on micro four thirds in order to achieve the same look that you would have on a full frame camera with a one to one reproduction ratio. So essentially what that means is that an object that's 20 millimeters in real life only has to take up 10 millimeters on the sensor. So that's where it gets one to two where in full frame, the 20 millimeter object would have to take up 20 millimeters on a full frame sensor. So basically you can actually be twice as far away as the minimum focus distance in order to achieve the same look as full frame. So you shouldn't really let it discount it too much. If anything, you could say, hey, with my micro four thirds, I can get two times magnification with the same lens. So that's kind of a benefit, but you obviously have to get freakishly close to the subject that you're shooting, which might be a problem for you bug shooters out there. If you're shooting live subjects, they probably don't want you to stick the lens like right in their face. Now this lens is definitely lighter and you can definitely feel some sort of generalized arm shake because of that, because there's no weight to fight against with stabilization. But it is a little bit better balanced than the 60 millimeter Olympus, which I thought the length and the lack of weight gave a little bit more up and down. This one doesn't have that as much, but there is some general kind of like lightness, but overall it's fine. Let's switch lenses. Okay, so now we're looking at the 30 millimeter F 2.8 from Panasonic and I can say right away that this one is noticeably better balanced. I think the little bit of extra weight and the perfect length Makes it really nice, really nice handling, noticeable right away. And we've got the dual IS enabled, so we'll see if that has an impact on the shake. And then we've also got the same, you only have got the ring, so our only options here for getting to one-to-one -one is just to turn the hell out of it until we get to the flower. And this one, the throw on this one means you have to do actually a few more turns than on the Olympus, so. So far I guess it's the slowest to get it to one-to-one. -to -one. And now we just bring it in slowly until we achieve focus there. So there are definitely some shakes, but I'm even talking and I don't know if it's a dual IS or the balance, but I felt I was able to hold the letters of Olympus in the middle of the frame a little bit better. There was less up and down movement. All right, let's try the last one. Okay, so lastly, we have the 45 millimeter Leica and same thing, although we have the image stabilization, we do not have any kind of one-to-one -one switch. So we just have to turn the ring until we get all the way over to the flower. And now we can bring it in slowly until we achieve focus. Pretty close to the 30 millimeter Panasonic. I don't know if it's any different, it'd be hard to tell. Maybe a little bit shakier, but that could be a lot of things, the design, the weight. I felt like the 30 millimeter was perfectly balanced. Uh, this one also has IS, not as good of IS, but it has it. With this one, you get a little bit more distance. It's about here to achieve focus, so something like that. So not that much greater, you get about an extra inch on the 30 millimeter, and that might be important to you if, again, distance is an issue. But uh, the 60 millimeter would obviously be the best of those. So overall, if I had to score it, this is tough because I decided to combine the handling with the one-to-one -one ease of use. Obviously, the 60 millimeter Olympus has the best of that case because there's literally just a selector that does it for you. But I found it the hardest to handhold. I would put the smaller Olympus in last place with only one point, I would put the 45 millimeter from Leica in third place with two points. And then between these two, this one is definitely easy to achieve one-to-one, -one, but it's not that hard to do it with this one. What I like about this one is the gauge that allows you to know when you're at one to two, one to four. But how important is that to the average person if they're just trying to frame a shot that they think looks good? Are they really trying to go, I want to be at exactly one to three? So that might not be that important. So in that case, I think I gotta give it to the Panasonic just because it just felt better in my hand and the IS made it easy to kind of hold it at one-to-one -one if you're hand holding. With a tripod, this is all kind of academic. So I'm gonna give it this one, first place four points, this one, second place three points, but it's close, it's a close call. Now speaking of tripods, we can't exactly use these images for the image quality comparisons because of the fact that I'm shaking and the focus point won't be exactly the same. So when we evaluate the image, different things are gonna be out of focus, it's not gonna be fair. So these images don't count what we just did. We're gonna put it on a tripod and test the image quality that way. But before we do that, while we're still hand bombing these things, let's do a little quick test on the video 
autofocus continuous because maybe you want to use this for something other than macro or maybe you want to film ants spitting in each other's mouths. All right, so we'll start off with the 45 millimeter because it's already on and we'll just do the same point to point but this time with autofocus continuous. So let's go down here and so we're just gonna wait for it to go if it ever does. There we go. Then we'll move it over here to the interface. Let's see what it does here. Now this one is making a little bit of noise. Let's put it up to the microphone so you can hear it for one test. You hear that? It's like a weird like whistling sound. Anyway, one more test here. So we're on the Olympus thing. That's pretty decent. And then over here to the interface one more time. All right, I think we have a pretty good handle on that. I consider that to be slow, but we'll have to compare it to other ones, you know, because it's relative. Uh, but that was the 45 millimeter Leica. All right, now we're using the 60 millimeter Olympus and we're gonna do the same test here. It's just not doing it. There we go. Over to the keyboard. I think it might be a little bit faster than the like it was, but uh, not by much if it's not going to do anything. Okay, I'm giving it something with plenty of light and contrast over here. I'm doing pink on black with a light behind it, and it's it's just, it's not even starting. It seems to be all over the place. I found that with the with the photos as well, is that sometimes, it, like with the single autofocus, that sometimes it was going, and like, look now, it's not going at all. Okay, that's enough of that. That's tough to say. That one might actually be worse than the Leica one was. So, for now, put that one aside. Let's jump over to the Little Olympus, because this guy had impressive autofocus single in photo. I was impressed with how fast it was. Let's throw that guy on and see what we got. Look at it go. It's significantly faster than the two prior to this for video autofocus. Yeah, I'm impressed by this lens's focusing capabilities considering that it's the lowest priced one on the list. All right, so that was much faster. That's the best one so far, easily. All right, last up we got the 30 millimeter f2.8 from Panasonic, same test, here we go. Huh? That felt pretty quick. Black on black. Slower. It did find it though. All right, so that seems pretty good. I think that somehow the uh, the cheapest little Olympus here might actually be the best video autofocuser with the Panasonic just a little bit behind. So if I were to give it scores, it would go number one, four points, the Olympus 30. Number two with three points, the Panasonic 30. Number three, I think would be the Leica with two points. I think that's what I said, right? And then the Olympus in last place with only one point. Okay, so now we're gonna put it on a tripod and we're gonna set up a little scene and we're gonna try to take exactly the same image with the different lenses, which will be tough because they have different focal lengths. So I will try my absolute best to match the focal plane and match the framing. And we're gonna do this in two runs. The first run is gonna be them all wide open. So the three lenses will be at 2.8 and this little guy will be at uh, 3.5 to show you how they perform wide open in case you wanna use that for stacking. And then we'll stop them all down to 5.6, level the playing field and see what they look like there. So I've got the images loaded here into Lightroom and I've got them marked so I know which belongs to which. Put them color coded a little bit so the red ones are the ones when the lens is wide open and the blue ones are when they're stopped down to 5.6. So let's start off by comparing the two 30 millimeters and with them wide open. So the Olympus is gonna show up on the left and the Panasonic on the right. And I focused on the eye in all of these photos in the same spot and I tried to achieve the same 
framing. It was easy on the 30, it got a little bit harder when we changed focal lengths. So for me, these are really close. I would say the Panasonic is a little bit punchier, and then the Olympus suffers a little bit because we had, it was stopped down because the lens only goes to 3.5, so a little bit more is in focus, but you're gonna get a little bit of reduced dynamic range from having a higher ISO to compensate. Color-wise, they're very, very close. Like I said, it's a little bit punchier. Detail-wise, like if we take a little bit of a closer look here, they're so, so close. I mean, maybe I like the Panasonic a little bit better, but but just by a hair. All right, now let's jump back and we'll compare the 5.6 versions on each and we'll see if there's even less of a difference here. So at 5.6, I would say that the Panasonic is kind of clearly pulling ahead in terms of a more pleasing image by my taste. And I would say that we're, we're preserving the details without, uh, you know, blending them out as much as what's happening over here on the Olympus. I also just want to take a quick peek at the sort of quality of the bokeh. On the Olympus, actually, I would say that the, the, the circles are a little bit more rounded. There's a little bit more of the sort of geometric blade pattern over here on the Panasonic. So I would say the bokeh is better on the Olympus, but it's it's minor. All these things we're talking about between these two lenses are actually pretty minor. I would say that's a win for the Panasonic because it can achieve pretty similar results but with more light because of the 2.8. And then stop down to 5.6, I think that the Panasonic is a little bit a little bit better. Okay, so moving on then, we'll compare the Panasonic, our current winner, at its widest aperture to the Panasonic 45 millimeter Leica at its widest aperture. So the 45 millimeter is gonna be on the right and the 30 millimeter is gonna be on the left. Now, like I said, the framing is just a little bit different because I obviously I had to pull the tripod back in order to line them up, but I tried my best. The focus point is still the same. Uh, if we jump over here to the bokeh first, the Leica actually has a much more oblong pattern than the Lumix 30 millimeter does in this comparison. In terms of detail, they're pretty close. I, I would say maybe the Leica has slightly nicer color renditions. Um, let's take a little bit closer look here. Wow, they're they're actually surprisingly close when it comes to the quality. Like if you look at the scratches and the way that they're rendered out. And light transmission, I would say, is pretty similar as well. If anything, the 30 might be a hair, a hair brighter. But very, very, very close again. I would say that the punchiness kind of increased even more going to the bigger Panasonic. So, you know, maybe, maybe just by a nose, I would give it to the to the 45 millimeter, but these are pretty, pretty close. I don't like the bokeh pattern as much, but it's a tough call. So let's do a quick 5.6 comparison, see if there's any differences there. So this will have the tighter bokeh, and I would say you're basically just seeing the same pattern, but just enlarged over here because of the 45 millimeter focal length. You're gonna get a little bit different field of view, but uh, it's I think it's about similar for there. And if we look at the details, again, they're really close. It's hard to say if maybe the 5.6 on Panasonic's 30 is actually, it's, it starts to outperform the Leica around 5.6. Which would be interesting, this might be a really, you know, big sweet spot for this lens. But they're so, so, so close again. Yeah, I would say, if we just look a little bit closer right in here on the details of the scratches. I want to say that the Panasonic 30 actually maybe pulled ahead by hair. Let's stick with the 30 because I think I might like that one best overall and we'll compare its 2.8 to the Olympus 60 millimeter 2.8. So again, the same thing, there's a slight, slight variation in the framing because I backed up the 60 millimeters, but uh, the focus point is the same again, which is gonna be on the eye. We do not need to be that close to start. Let's take a look over here at the bokeh. So obviously the 60 millimeter, they're much bigger and creamier because of the focal length. It looks like they both have that oblong pattern, but maybe the Olympus is a little bit better handled than the Panasonic is. If we come over here and we take a look at the details, Hmm, it would seem as though that the Olympus isn't transmitting as much light as the Panasonic is. That could also be the proximity thing I was talking about, because obviously with, you know, angle of reflection, when we're a little bit further away, there's going to be less concentration close up to the lens. But I would imagine that'd be minor. There are variations in lenses' T-stops and how much light they actually transmit at a given aperture. And I believe that this is looking like the Panasonic is has better light transmission at 2.8 than the Olympus does. In terms of quality of the image, they're, they're both pretty good. It looks to me like the Olympus might be a hair sharper. It could be that there was a tiny bit of focus drift because the Olympus is looking sharper over here, but the Panasonic is looking a little bit sharper over here. So there might be a little bit of a focus drift there. 
Yeah, there definitely is if you look at here versus here. But they're close. And I would say that, you know, they're pretty indistinguishable. But I would probably give it a little bit to the Olympus. Maybe just by a hair, I would give the image quality to the Olympus. Overall, looking at them side by side like this, they're, they're so, so close. And then let's take a look at the five, the 5.6 from the Panasonic 30 versus the 5.6 from the Olympus. Again, I would say that the Olympus has a bit smoother of bokeh where we're getting that octagonal kind of pattern over here on the Panasonic. And if you look a little bit closer at the details, again, I'm seeing a little bit more light transmission on the Panasonic, but at 5.6 detail wise, these guys are pretty identical. I think I might like the Olympus 60 just, just a pinch more. So if we put the Olympus 60 millimeter in first place and then the Panasonic 30 millimeter in second place, we can just do a quick comparison between the Olympus 30 millimeter and the Panasonic 45 millimeter and see which one sort of gets third and fourth place respectively. They're pretty close. I wanna say that there's slightly better colors on the Panasonic and maybe a little bit of better sharpness, but we're actually getting pretty similar results here at 5.6. And if we look at the bokeh, these ones I would say are are close. I might still like the Olympus shape a little bit better, but it's really close. All four of these lenses are actually really, really close. So let's call the Panasonic 45 in third place and the Olympus 30 millimeter in last place. That's gonna be four points for the Olympus 60, three points for the Panasonic 30, two points for the Panasonic 45, and one point for the Olympus 30 millimeter. But again, when it comes to image quality, you're getting you're getting pretty similar results here, and I think they're all pretty darn good. All right, so let's go ahead and add up the scores as they are now from the first categories, and then we'll talk a little bit about value. So from the top, the Olympus 30 millimeter has a total of 10 points. The Panasonic 30 millimeter has 16. Panasonic 45 Leica has 11 points. The Olympus 60 millimeter has a total of 13 points. Now the easiest way to figure out the value if we wanna just let the math do it is to put in the prices of each one of these lenses and divide that by the total amount of points that they got. And that will tell us how much we have to pay in dollars for each point of score. And the one with the lowest amount there would be the one with the best value. So we pull in the prices and I'm gonna use the prices in US dollars to make this easy. There's some sales going on with Olympus, but maybe we should consider that because there are often sales going on with Olympus products. So the Olympus 30 is 249 on sale, 299 regular US. The Olympus 60 is 399 on sale or 499 regular US. And then the Panasonic 30 is 397 and that's regular price. And the Panasonic Leica 45 is $798, again, regular price US. So if we divide those numbers by the score that they got, we're gonna get some value scores, which is gonna look like this. 24.9 for the Olympus 30, 30.7 for the Olympus 60, 24.8 for the Panasonic 30, and 72.5 for the Panasonic 45. So that's much worse value. That means you have to pay $72.50 for every point of score that we gave it in the rubric. Now you'll notice that the Panasonic 30 and the Olympus 30 are actually very, very close, with the Olympus 60 not trailing that much behind. Now if we make a small adjustment, which you might want to consider because they're not always going to be on sale, even though they are often, and we get rid of the sale prices and we do the math again, this time the Olympus 30 moved up to 29.9 and the Olympus 60 moved up to 38.4. So the Leica 45 is still way behind in the value, but this puts a clear winner for value on the Panasonic 30. But there's always a couple other considerations that you have to make when it comes to value as well. The first one is if there's a dual purpose for the lens that you can get out of it. And the second one is basically just your feelings on the product. You know, if you really like a product, like the way that it looks or the way that it feels, you might be more inclined to use it more often. And the more you use it, the better value you're getting out of the dollar that you spent. If you think of it kind of like paying for entertainment, the more entertainment that you get, the longer duration of entertainment you get, the better value you're getting on the price of admission or the price that you paid to get that entertainment. And this can be considered from the professional side as well. Obviously when we're talking about entertainment, it sounds like we're talking about a hobby, but on the professional side, a lens that you feel more comfortable with or that you like shooting better, that you're more reliable with, that, that's going to get you more keepers. And the more keepers that you get, the more shots that you get that you're proud of or the ones that you can deliver to your client, that's going to stretch and extend the value of that lens as well. But those considerations are mostly subjective and they're going to vary a lot depending on you. So all I can really tell you at this point is my personal feelings. And for me, it's the Panasonic 30 millimeter f2.8. This is my favorite one. It's the one that I reach for and put on the camera if I want to use one of these. Uh, I like its weight. I like its feel. I like its design. I like the way that it looks. It's, it's more inviting to me. And it also has another quality that I find difficult to describe. But basically, when I look at something that I might want to take a photo of, and I kind of frame it up with my eyes, and I get closer or farther away until I think, yeah, that's what I want to take a photo of. If I then bring the camera in front of my face and the 30 millimeter f2.8 from Panasonic is on, it just looks 
how I would have expected it to. When I put the 60 millimeter on, I found I was like, oh, wait a minute, no, I'm way too close. And I got like back up, do some weird things in my arms or get further away. But the 30 mil just looked the way, it looks the way that I look, if that makes sense. Like it sees the way that I see things. And so I think I would use the Panasonic 30 millimeter more and thus I would get better value out of it. And I also think I would use it for things other than macro as well, because again, that natural view for me, I think I could use it for some street work and stuff like that and be happy with it. Where the 60 millimeter from Olympus, as much as I like the lens, I find this for me doesn't offer that dual purpose as much because 60 millimeters is pretty close. You got to think of it like 120 millimeter full frame equivalent. That's pretty tight. That's tight for even portraiture. So I feel like this is a single purpose lens, but I do still think it has pretty good value even if it does only serve a macro function. Now the 45 millimeter from Leica definitely can serve a dual purpose because 45 millimeters is a great focal length for portraits as well, but it's so far behind in the value scores that it might be a little bit more difficult to consider this a decent dual purpose value, but that would depend solely on you. If you're gonna use a lot of macro and a lot of like 45 millimeter portraits, then you might find this to be worth twice the price of the other lenses. For me personally, I don't. And then finally, the 30 millimeter F3.5 from Olympus is a solid little performer, and it's also quite inexpensive, and when you calculate the sales into it, it's equally tied for value with the Panasonic 30 millimeter. And I didn't expect it to outperform the other lenses in some of the categories that it did, so I'm pretty impressed with the lens. But it's possible that it's priced closely enough to the other two lenses with good value, like the 60 millimeter if you want a dedicated macro, or the 30 millimeter if you want improved handling and versatility, that it might be worth throwing a few extra dollars at the problem and getting a slightly faster, slightly cleaner glass. But when you put the scores all together, mix in some value calculations, and add a little dash of mystery appeal, for me, the Panasonic 30 millimeter f2.8 is my favorite macro lens for MFT, and I recommend it to anyone looking for a lens like this for their micro four thirds system. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right, I'm done. <laughs>